and welcome back to the second part of this tutorial. So we're gonna do uh, the implementation at this point and uh, we're gonna continue that and then and let's see how far we get and then on the final part we will finish the whole app. So this is where we left off last time and um, I'm thinking that this service might take some time so I'm gonna add a progress dialog. So some of the instance variable and then progress dialog dialog and then I'm gonna use I'm gonna instantiate that dialog progress dialog this and then dialog that set message loading and then ellipsis there and then dialog that show and then in both cases of the service success and service failure, I'm gonna do dialog that hide since that service completely finished by that point. It's completely finished at that point. So I'm gonna hide those there. And um, another thing we need to open the manifest and make sure we have the internet permission, otherwise this would fail catastrophically. So users permission and then internet right there. So that's good, let's go back here. So let's start now by implementing this, um, this objects here. So this data objects, the channel, condition, item, and units and all this kind of stuff. So let's actually split the window and on the channel, this is what we get. So on the channel, we're interested in units and we're interested in item. So let's do that. Let's add two instance variables in here, private, item item and let's also do units and then units and let's do instantiate those units those new units and we're going to do some dependency injection here so we're, in, we're going to inject the JSON object so data that app JSON object and it's gonna be units. And let's instantiate the item instance variable. Item, and let's do item that populate, and let's inject that JSON object data of JSON object, and it's gonna be item. So, Let's do some, let's create some getters for the units and item objects. So getters, actually not getters and setter, just getter. Let's select both and we have two getters right there. So condition, so this is condition and we're gonna have private and code. We're gonna have private string actually private int temperature and finally a string and this is going to be text but I'm going to call it description it might be a bit confusing at first but it it's better like that I understand it better like that so I'm going to do code equals data opt int and it's going to be code then I'm going to duplicate that and it's going to be temp but in this case it's going to be temperature so as you can see they, ha they don't have the same names and it's going to be description and then it's going to be opt string that's going to be text all right so we're taking care of instantiating those variables and let's do a getter for all these instance variables. Let's go to item now. And on item, pretty much we're just interested on in conditions. So let's have private condition, condition. And let's just instantiate that. So condition equals new condition and condition and inject that JSON object. So data opt JSON object. And let's just inject that in. So condition. 
So that looks good. Now let's go to units. And in units, we're only interested on the temperature. So let's do that. There you go. Kind of misspelling left and right. <laughs> so temperature equals data that opt string. And it's going to be temperature. So let's do some square setter for this. So getter. And there we go. We got a header for that. So at this point, uh, we have to implement the the Yahoo Weather Service. So let's go back to the Yahoo Weather Service and let's expand this because at this point we're not interested on that. And uh, actually, let's here let's uh, let's add another variable for the exception. Exception error. And uh, the reason is because this doing background might return some exceptions, but the problem is that um, this is not running on the UI thread. So if we call this um, exception service failure, that's gonna be running on the UI thread and we're not gonna, uh, we don't want to call the runnable run on UI thread. We just want to run those callbacks in the UI thread. So we're gonna call those methods on the on post execute since this method runs on the UI thread. And let's get started with that. So uh, let's go back to to the API endpoint and let's copy this and uh, let's actually do some variables in here so let's do string jql which is a Java query language I'm gonna do a string that format and I'm gonna let you know what that means later and I'm gonna do string endpoint equals I'm gonna use a string that format again and I'm gonna do that and it's gonna paste this in and uh, like all this and let's just do percent s and let's just do jql in here actually since we're encoding that so we're gonna do uri encode so it's safe uri encoding and uh, let's actually look at the query that we're interested in. So let's go back and let's look at the query. So select this query, copy that and paste it in here. And let's basically replace this by percent s and then we're just gonna pass the location. So this location variable right here will be injected into this. So the end string would be basically all of this where text equals this location. Same thing here on the endpoint. This encoded JQL, it's gonna be passed into here where the percent %s is. So with that in mind, let's actually go ahead and start actually implementing the service. So URL, URL equals new URL, not URI, URL. And then this is going to be endpoint. And this is going to throw an exception. So let's catch that exception. And we're going to do error equals E. So the error equals the exception. And we're going to return no. And then we're going to do some handling after that. After that, so now let's do URL connection. Connection equals URL that open connection. It's going to throw another exception. So add a cost clause. So error equals e, and then return no. Actually, we don't need to return that no since we're returning no at the end. And uh, it's identical, doesn't matter. Actually it does, so we could just do exception there. We're catching everything. And let's just do that uh, to make it more efficient. Let's code. Let's code is always less, more, more efficient. So now let's do input stream. 
input stream equals connection that get input stream and then we're going to read that input stream so buffer reader reader equals new buffer reader and then let's pass in a new input stream reader and then let's pass into that the input stream and now let's do a string builder to build all that uh, that response into a string and then it's going to be result equals new string builder and then let's have a string for a line so we're going to loop into this thing so we're going to be reading all the input stream so let's do a while loop and then while line equals reader that read line and this does not equal to null then that means we still have some content there to read and let's do result that append and let's do line all right and then here let's return result string all right so we're good right there and we're updated but never queried doesn't matter so let's actually actually not reader what's going on in there so result there you go so now let's do the on post execute method and actually implement it so let's remove this we don't need that and let's uh, do JSON object. Yes, this string is a, the JSON payload we just received and data equals new JSON object and S. And that's gonna have some exceptions. I remember what I told you that this runs on the uh, UI thread. So first I'm gonna check if S equals to null and, and, and um, error does not it's not equal to null then this means that we're he, we just got an exception we return null as a result but error does not equal to null since it equals an exception so right there we're just going to do return and since this is void we don't have to return anything and we're just going to do Call back that service failure and we're just gonna pass the error which is an exception and then data so let's actually see what we need to return back it actually gets returned so let's split this window and uh, as you can see we have count and we have these results so what happens if we pass in a city that does not exist so city that does not exist that we get count zero so we have to take into consideration because if we try to parse this as an as a json array then it's going to fail because there is nothing on it or or as a json object what it actually is so let's actually take that into account and let's check for that. So first we have to get the, the, the stuff from the query. So let's do that. So JSON object query results equals data that JSON object, objects and object, and then just do query. All right, so we got that. And now let's do the count. So int count equals Query results dot int and count. All right, so now let's check if count equals to zero. Then that means the city that we passed in, there's no data for that city. So let's just do a return here and let's do service actually call back where's call back call back that service failure and let's pass create a new exception class here so it's going to be a local exception class so let's do public 
an inner class. Public class has going to be location weather exception and this is going to extend the base exception class and we're going to have a constructor that takes a message as a parameter and we're going to do new location weather exception and we're going to say no weather information found for and then we're going to append location right there and this location is the instance variable that we've got in this uh, weather Yahoo weather service class so let's see what we have in there so that's good and now we're just going to create a channel object new channel and uh, let's populate that channel so channel that uh, populate this core results that actually let's do opt JSON object so that doesn't throw an exception there even though if it throws an exception she will go down there we'll go down here so let's do results since we're here so we need this one and now let's do opt json object channel all right and in here we're going to do callback service failure and we're going to pass that exception right there and uh, right here since we're doing everything good so we're going to do callback service success and we're going to pass the channel there all right so and let's remove these things that we're not using so our code is cleaner and uh, so I think that's it for this tutorial uh, we're gonna uh, finish up in the next tutorial so please make sure you stay tuned and you watch the next tutorial